West Highland White Terrier is one of the smaller members of Scotland's Terrier tribe and easily one of the most stylish. He came here by way of England early in this century. This breed is all Terrier in determination, playfulness, and devotion. They are hunters, they have speed and endurance, and are extremely intelligent. They make fine family companions, good watchdogs, and generally gay and light-hearted in their approach to life and its problems. One important point, the Westie will not tolerate being ignored. When you are in a room with the Westie, you'll be reminded of your good fortune at regular intervals. This is West Highland White That's Terrier, number one. eight. Straight away. <laughs> I hope you're listening to Roger. He comes up with them. <laughs> this is Stacy. Handled by Birgit Cody. Stacy's father was best breed winner here at Westminster in 1993. Look at that face, Joe. Oh, it's selling. Selling everything. Just nothing but personality. Well, we're going to be back with more. We know you're going to be there. We'll be right back after these messages. Well, you see it on your screen, so don't forget to check out our special Westminster Kennel Club website at www.usanetwork.com. There'll be lots of fun information during these two special days. We've got games, features, lots more. Hey, David, you think that is where we're going to find wire-haired terriers? <laughs> They could oh, be there. Put them both up here, please. <laughs> I'll tell you, the, inter the, the uh, internet is home to purebred dogs all over the place. It's, a, it's one of the places you should you should look when you're shopping for a dog to get some information about dogs. Bring your Norfolk out, ma'am, please, and your Sealy, sir. This is called sparring. What you're seeing here, Joe. The dogs are supposed to rise Let up on their at back each other, legs. Please. You'd be good kids. And remember, they're supposed to be aggressive, positive dogs. She's not going to let them hurt each other or get into a fight. It's just right, more to show their here, personality. Please. The white one got up there. Well, you know, the, the great show dogs, they know they're supposed to be paying attention to their like handlers, too. I'd like the Bedlington too. and the Border together, please. Bedlington and the Border. Uh -oh. see if just see if they'll pay any attention to each other. They say they know who has the cookie. <laughs> That's no. Whoa! That <laughs> <laughs> Bedlington knew what to do. Don't you be coming over here after All my right, cookie. All right, Daniel Wheaton, please, and the Welsh, sir. Now, this, this is a, another this tough group, Joe. The Terry Brooks all. Oh, look at the little oh, one. The little one didn't think he's overmatched. It's like well, I said okay. earlier, these Terriers are always supposed to be on their toes looking for trouble. If you know their history, you understand you that about back, the personality. Push back, please. The rest of you may push back. So here's her cut. She's got the wire fox, the Lakeland, awesome blossom, the Norfolk Terrier, the Sealy, the Bedlington, the Border, the Soft Coated Wheaton, and the Welsh Terrier. I think she's going to make this come down to between the Welsh and the Lakeland. Here, please. Bedlington up into the second slot. Walking back down the line. Taking a good hard look. I think she might be done here. All right, let's take yeah. these around, please. Here we go. On paper, a bit of an upset, but a beautiful wire fox terrier with Bill McFadden handling. Let's see if she's done. If she takes a step towards the dogs. Yes, there she goes. That's her order. That's the way they're finishing? I think so. No, she's stopping them. She's, there she goes. Number one, the wire. Number two, the Bedlington. Number three, I'm switching, and here's the score. I think she moved around a little bit there on us at the end. I heard her say something. I think maybe she put the uh, Lakeland back to four. You couldn't quite see who she put into third. Was it the Norfolk, maybe? We'll see. All the handlers there congratulating Bill McFadden on a wonderful win in the Terrier group. You figure that's an upset, huh? I think it's a bit of an upset on paper, but, you know, this group is so competitive, so many great dogs, it's just like the show itself. No surprises. 
Okay, we just saw the winner of the Terrier Group, and we'll be back with more. A great night here at Madison Square Garden. Be back in a minute. And here are the results of the Terrier Group. There's the winner, champion random reaction, a wire fox terrier upset. You know, we heard the judge say when we were waiting commercial over her mic that it was a big surprise to her because she has never seen this particular dog before. So she's judging on the day. That's what it's all about. There's the results. You saw that little bit of a change. She never saw that particular dog. That particular dog, you know, Lydia's an active breeder exhibitor, so she travels around a lot and shows dogs. So uh, for her not to have seen a dog is a bit of a surprise for me, but wonderful dog. Oh, she was very honest about it, too. Well, we'll be back with more for you in just a minute. A lot of excitement, a couple upsets. And don't forget tomorrow night, because everything we're seeing tonight is leading up to tomorrow night. For the final night of the 121st Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. And of course, I'm talking about Best in Show. And that's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, 7 Central, right here on USA. Hey, if you think there's no place for a dog here in New York, I'm going to tell you something now. We're going to prove otherwise because it may just surprise you what all a dog can do in the Big Apple. in New York. I love the, the doggy cookies and how about that uh, uh, canine quiche for crying out loud. <laughs> Joe, I'm constantly amazed by what a dog oriented place New York City is. It never ceases to amaze me. Well, it, it proved right on that spot. We showed the working group, the terrier group and coming up now we got the toy. The toy group in just a minute. We'll be right back. Well, if you've ever been to New York, you know that was the Woolman Skating Rink in Central Park, and what a beautiful shot that was. Just to add to what you said, David, uh, you wouldn't think of New York as being so dog-friendly, but it really is. It really, it amazes me 
that everywhere you go you see dogs. Once dogs again, we're here Georgia with that in mind because Georgia. we're here for the dog show, but we're driving up the street and I'm trying to identify every dog and, and the person walking the dog. I said, I must know that guy. He's got a dog. <laughs> He's here in New York during February. Must be my guy. And what? here are some of the perfect dogs for these uh, New York apartments, the portable companions. All right. Uh, please. You can see a lot of them uh, will resemble their larger cousins. Take a look uh, at the... Please. This One's is the around, tiger. Please, and then you go on the table. That's the judge you're hearing, who is Mike. 21 breeds and varieties bred down to their small size often resemble their larger cousins in miniature farm. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel shown for the first time at Westminster. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel making a debut. Uh, this is my favorite group. I cannot be objective when I see these. There's the, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, the new dog in this group. The only new dog at Westminster this year, the only new breed. That's a ruby. They also come in red and white. It's tough to see some of these dogs when they get behind their signs, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> The Affen Pinsa has been known to Europeans at least as far back as the 17th century. It has been called the monkey dog because of its rounded head and bushy mustache. The Affen Pinsa probably was the foundation breed for the Brussels Griffin and has been used in the development of other toy breeds as well. The Affen Pinsa is a first-rate companion animal and is, in fact, a bit of a monkey in personality. This is Affen Pinsa number 12. This is another Tyler. We got Tylers and Taylors all over the place here. It's number one Affin Pincher in the country last year, owned by Dr. and Mrs. Brian Shack, here, uh, dentist, and uh, here's Dr. Shack Handley. These guys don't have to run quite so hard as the bigger dogs. Oh, they can't. And it It'd be on empty running that far. That needle would be way at the end. The judge doesn't make the move quite so far, but you don't want him going so fast you can't track those legs. Our judge is Gilbert Kahn. Is there anything they do to make sure they don't slip? Can you do anything? Some people think you can put some stuff called tacky paw on the bottom of their pads, and other people think all that does is collect the dust and make them slip and slide even more. It becomes kind of an individual preference. The Brussels Griffin is named for the capital of Belgium, where his kind was first developed and prospered. There are two coat varieties, the rough, which is similar to the Irish Terrier, and the smooth, like that found in the pub. The two coat styles are shown in competition with each other because, aside from coat, their standards are identical. These little dogs, popular here since the turn of the century, are devoted and intelligent companions. They're very happy little dogs, a great individualist. Everyone you meet will be a new and probably different experience. This is Brussels Griffin, number eight. This dog is named Rembrandt, champion 2B's Rembrandt. The whole litter was named for toothpaste in honor of the owner, Dr. Harold Brooks, who's a dentist. Cohen's the dog with Nancy, his wife, and Lana. Named for toothpaste. Thank you. Nancy Brooks is the handler here from McGee, Mississippi. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel was accepted into the toy group in January 1996 and is being seen here at Westminster for the first time. This breed is very popular in England. It's named after both Charles I and II, who fancied these little dogs. Its following here is small and devoted. Shown in four color varieties, these dogs are gay, very friendly, and without shyness or bad temper. This is Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, number 32, and it's the ruby, or all red variety. This is the first Cavalier King Charles Spaniel to compete in the group in the history of Westminster. The newest breed recognized by the AKC was actually recognized back in January of 96. But uh, because of the early closing dates for this show, nobody was able to qualify. Or the origin it. of the Chihuahua is a mystery. It did not really originate in the Mexican state of that name, and why it is so named is not clear. It probably originated in Asia and came to Mexico in very ancient times. It is one of the smallest, if not the smallest, of all purebred dogs. It is a pleasing little companion with a devoted following. 
two coat varieties, long and smooth are recognized, but the standards aside from coat are all the same. But that is a small little dog. Now, if you saw that dog and it had a sign on it that said, use two AA batteries, you'd have to believe it. Look how small this it is. This is Long Go to Chihuahua, number 35. <laughs> we have something for everybody, Joe. That's a great thing about purebred dogs. Look at them. Nina work handling this dog. Nina and her husband, Michael, from Lima, Ohio. Wait for him. The little legs can't catch up. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ani. Thank you. Champion Dartan's Magic Onyx, number one long coat last year, owned by Stephen and Beverly Gall. <laughs> this is Smooth Coated Chihuahua, number 28. Here's the Smooth. This is in case you get tired of grooming that long coat. You can move into Smooths. Willie, owned by Deanna French from Bedford, That's Indiana, right. and Pat Rainier from Chino Valley, Arizona. Yeah, but when they don't have that hair, they look like they should be getting more meal money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. The dog that lives in Arizona, Joe. Where? Lives in uh, Chino Valley. Actually, probably living with its, with, its, with its owner right now. But here's the handler, Thank James you. Lehman from Swanton, Ohio. Uh, Jim works as a produce manager. Been showing dogs for 37 years. The Chinese Crescent was admitted to the toy group by the AKC in 1991. The breed, however, dates back to at least the early 1500s, and perhaps earlier than that. They appear to have come from China, although Spanish explorers found them in Mexico and in port cities of South and Central America. The two types, the hairless and the coated, or powder pep, are judged by the same standard, up except back. for coat and some differences in dentition. Ideal height is 11 to 13 inches, although variations are still acceptable. This is Chinese crested number 12. We're using the uh, scoreboard right now because in live television, things do happen and we lost our graphics machine. But we'll keep you updated. Do they, is that the way they have to trim that dog? No, the dog comes that way. It's a hairless it Chinese It comes dog. like that. There's another, there's another variation on the dog that has hair. It's called a powder puff, but this is the dominant one that you'll see. Really? They, uh, they actually, when they go outside, some of the fair-skinned ones need to have sunscreen when they're shown outside. Oh, I believe it, man. The English Toy Spaniel is a very old breed and has been popular with the British royal family since the days of the first Queen Elizabeth. There are two classifications of English Toy Spaniel. The Blenheim and Prince Charles constitutes one variety, and the King Charles and Ruby the second. Their genes are said to include Japanese toy breeds, and indeed, that would seem to be almost certainly the case. This is Blenheim and Prince Charles English Toy Spaniel, number 11. This dog is champion Debonair Double Jeopardy. Now, if you had a dog named Double Jeopardy, what would his call name be? Alex for Trebek. You've been on that show, haven't you, Joe? <laughs> you must have been on one of those celebrity shows. I'm a big fan of Alex Trebek. And he, he'd be best in show for me when it comes to the game shows. Deborah Bowman, the breeder owner handler here from Greenville, Mississippi. The English Toy Spaniel is a very old breed and has been popular with the British royal family, as we said, since the days of Queen Elizabeth. And this is the variety known as King Charles and Ruby. English Toy Spaniel, number 15. Doesn't look very happy. <laughs> You're halfway down and back. Oh, he's happy. He just doesn't show the smile like a lot of different breeds. Watch the tail, Joe. Dogs smile with their tails. Okay. That tail's gone, see? And wasn't going as much as my bald friend over there. <laughs> he was really <laughs> wagging it. Those bald guys are smiling and happy all the time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is Michael, owned by Mark and Jacqueline Stemple, for both high school teachers in Long Island. Owner handled. Mark Thank Stemple's you. a music teacher. The Italian Greyhound has probably been around for at least 2,000 years, perhaps longer. He's a miniature Greyhound bred down to serve as a full-time pet, a true companion animal with no other assignment. Unlike the larger version, the miniature is not used for racing. This breed has been one of the all-time favorites of privileged families in Italy and southern France. They came to the United States, as so many breeds have, by way of England. 
They've been popular there since the early 17th century. This is Italian Greyhound number 16. Champion Bobet's Windermere Sirius style. Handled by Mary Dukes. Marietta, Georgia, who's a famous whippet breeder. Former professional zookeeper as well. She got ready for dogs by working with the big animals, the big cats. And look at him look around. He's just checking the crowd like he's got a bonus clause in his contract or something. <laughs> the dogs have wonderful dispositions. And they're very affectionate, but they're certainly The aristocratic Japanese chin is one of the oldest of all toy breeds. Its likeness can be found and engraved on stone, commemorated in enamel and pottery, and embroidered in silk. In 1853, Commodore Perry brought several back with him from his historic visit to Japan. A wave of importations followed in England and the United States. By the end of the 19th century, a good many were being seen in dog shows in this country. This is a true companion animal of antiquity, style, tradition, and class. This is Japanese Chin, number nine. Champion Briar Hill Rock and Roll. <laughs> As the dog likes music. Young and talented professional handler Scott Summer from Houston, Texas, handling for Diane Meyer and Geraldine Craddock, the owners. All that hair. Every time I see a dog like that walk, I think the window's open somewhere. You see the <laughs> hair blowing out. <laughs> the air conditioning's turned on too much. We got hair everywhere, Joe. We dog show people like to think of dog hair as a condiment more than anything else. <laughs> Look at that. Close the window. Maltine has been known for at least 28 centuries, making it easily one of the oldest of all breeds. Oh. The refinement and cleanliness of this little companion may be due in large part to its age. There has been time enough to work out the kinks and develop exactly the dog desired. Throughout much of history, royalty and people of refinement have favored this little dog. Ceramic representations of it have been found in both Greek and Egyptian tombs. They are gentle, affectionate, and have the vigor and high style to be totally successful as companion animals. Uh, this is Maltese number 19. August Tejon's Tickle Me Silly. Oh, uh, look at him. Handled by Tammy Simon from Ponca City, Oklahoma, who's also the breeder. Uh, the owners, Sam and Marion Lawrence from Orlando, Florida. There they are, Sam and Marion. They, of course, owned Lacey, the great wire fox terrier that went best in show here back in 1992. Oh, what a beauty. Well, well. We'll be back with more. I know you're not going to leave, so we'll see you in a minute or so. La Femme Nikita, Monday, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock Central Time. That's the sexiest secret agent on television, and it's not a secret anymore. So don't miss the show. The critics are calling Two Hip for Words next Monday night. All new episode, La Femme Nikita, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock Central on USA. Some of the beautiful flowers here at Westminster in the, in the club colors of purple and gold. There's the Shih Tzu. Oh. That's one of the breeds that Gilbert Kahn, our, uh, our judge for Everybody this group, up, that's one of his breeds. Everybody up, he says. He's moving over to Once the second around. sign. Here's a shot from our blimp, Joe. <laughs> you can give them some encouragement. Gilbert Kahn, our judge, is one of the top people in dogs, very involved with cultural and charitable activities, both in the dog world and in his hometowns of Miami and New York and, Ro and Newport, Rhode Island. Avid collector of of uh, 19th and 20th century dog paintings and current chairman of the board of the Dog Museum. Also chairman of the Animal Welfare Society of South Florida. Very fine gentleman. Gilbert's Charing Cross Kennels. He raised his first dogs were Norwich Terriers, but he moved into the toys, Shih Tzus, Japanese Chins, Brussels Griffons, and Long Coated Chihuahuas. That's a baby. Been judging for 21 years. The toy matches a terrier as a breed apart is a little over 150 years old. His lineage, however, goes back much further than that. He's been known in his time as the toy black and tan. In fact, this is the toy variety of the Manchester Terrier, named like the larger version for Manchester, England, where the larger dog was first arrived from more generalized terrier lines. 
This is Toy Manchester Terrier, number 16. This is TT, number 10 Toy Dog, 1996, owned by Pat Dresser and Greg Myers, who's the handler here. We saw Greg last year. Thank you. There's Patty Lipinski, who's the breeder. We saw Greg last year. Of course, his wife, Jane, went best in show last year with the club. The miniature pincer is distinctly not a bred down version of the Doberman pincer, as so many people right. apparently believe. In fact, this toy is by far the older breed, but they do both come from Germany. The miniature pincer, or mini pin, dates back at least 300 years, although its real development began around 1895, about the same time that Louis Doberman was working on his pincer. But that is coincidence and nothing more. This small breed Halfway was seen in this country, but rarely before 1928. The miniature pincer is a first-rate companion, loyal and true, he makes a very good watchdog. This is Miniature Pincer, or Mini Pin, number 22. This is Jake, Joe. You see that hackney motion in the front, that hackney gait, kind of sets them apart. It gives them that real flashy front action. Like he's running sideways. <laughs> this is Jake, owned by Jeffrey and Philip Helming from Bristol, Connecticut, handled by Kathy Helming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Papillon is French for butterfly. The name is applied to this breed because of the appearance of its ears. The breed dates back to Spain, Italy, and France, at least to the 16th century, and probably further back than that. The old masses frequently included a papillon in portraits of noble and royal subjects. They are strong-willed little tyrants, stubborn, individualistic, and altogether delightful. They are a lot tougher than their size would seem to suggest. This is Papillon, back, number 19. Well, that's why I used to like to listen to those French broadcasters when a knuckleball pitcher was pitching, they'd say, he threw the El Papillon. <laughs> Sounds so nice. It does. Yeah, that makes great sense. Would you mind striking out if a guy struck you out on a Papillon? Yeah, I think I'd really be offended on that one. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say knuckleball is ugly, but Papillon, you could go home and tell your mother, struck me out with a Papillon. Just doesn't seem Thank fair. You. Champion Lotiki, good time Charlie, the big upset winner in the breed today. Owned by Pamela Norberg, a microbiologist from Fort, Dar Fort Dodge, Iowa. Coned with Lou Ann King, handled by Jan Bodorf. The Pekingese has long been one of the most popular of all toy breeds. He dates to the 8th century in China, where he was sacred and only by the most privileged strata of society. His tapering hindquarters, massive front end, and the mane earned him the name of Lion Dog. When the British looted the Imperial Palace in Peking in 1860, the Western world got its first good look at one of China's best kept secrets. The Chinese killed many of them to keep them from falling into European hands, which seems to have been, in a ret retrospect, a bit of an overreaction. This is Pekingese number 10. Boy, this afternoon, Audrey and I were watching from up there, David, and when you see a ring full of Pekingese, you really see a sight, man. Look at them. Oh, these are sacred dogs in China, Joe. They were called the sleeve dog because they would carry them up the sleeves of their robes. Dog is Piper, owned by Herb and Erna Holcomb. Thank you. From Birmingham, Alabama. Brenda Scheibauer from Chicago is the handle. The Pomeranian is a true Arctic type, a northern Spitz dog bred down to vest pocket size. The Palm was once very much larger than he is today. The breed in this scale down style comes from Pomerania in Germany. A tad over a century ago, Pomeranians weighed over 20 pounds. That was in England, but now we see them ranging from three to seven pounds. It's been a long time since Pomeranians pulled sleds or herded reindeer, but that is their ancient lineage. Now they are objects of art and first-rate companion of <laughs> spirit, fire, and class. This oh, is Pomeranian man. 23. You gotta love that. <laughs> Billy came to play, Joe. Look at that. A young dog, two years old, owned by Ruby Poole from Claremore, Oklahoma. Thank you. Handled by Blake Jones. You realize that Shaquille O'Neal's shoe weighs more than that dog? <laughs> if I were this dog, I'd watch out for Shaquille O'Neal's shoes. <laughs> he could sleep in that shoe. One of the most popular breeds of all time, the Toei Poodle is a bred down version of the standard Poodle by way of the miniature. The standards for all three are the same except for height. 
The standard poodle must be over 15 inches at the withers. A miniature must be 15 inches or under, but over 10 inches. The toy must be 10 inches or less. Otherwise, one standard of perfection is used. The standard and miniature are both shown as non-sporting breeds with a toy, of course, seen here in an appropriate size group. Few dogs have been shown the adulation this breed enjoys. This is Toy Poodle number six. Crowd's going to react to this one, David. Poodles are always very popular here. Have been a lot of best in show winners. This is Gecko, a dog that was actually bred in Japan. Joe Champion Dignity of Jewelry House Yoko. A poodle, when it's groomed like that, it looks like it's always ready to go to a party. <laughs> you know, it's funny, the haircut is, is a functional haircut. I, I don't want you to let that haircut fool you, you because these dogs are very active, have their basis as sporting dogs. Probably not so much of the toys as the uh, standards and the minis. Tell me how that functions. It keeps the joints warm in cold water. Okay. Kudel means to splash. The hog almost certainly originated in China as the smooth-coated cousin of the Pekingese. He's probably one of the oldest of all the bush race dogs. He was seen in Europe in the 17th century, transported there on ships operated by the Dutch East Africa. India Company. He was quickly the darling of European nobility. In Holland, he was so popular, he became known as the Dutch Pug. And people have long believed the breed originated there. Not so. This is the largest of all the toy breeds, a robust, demanding companion. This is Pug number 40. Champion News Chancellor, J.B. Rare. Owned by Sonia New from Bettendorf, Iowa. There's Sonia and Patricia Park, the breeder. Handled by Corky Vroom from El Monte, California. Thank you. Corky's won eight groups here at Westminster. Six of them different groups. A second generation handler. I'm making this dog one of the favorites here. He's the boss in the clubhouse. The Shih Tzu, according to tradition, was developed in China's imperial court as a special toy of the emperor. It is said the old gentleman gave awards to the breeders of his favorite. The breed was kept much in the hands of royalty, or at least nobility, until the revolution when many were killed. Those salvaged were taken to England for the most part, and the breed rebuilt there. In recent years, the breed has become enormously popular in the United States. The heavy, dense coat is seen in many colors. This breed makes an ideal companion for people with limited space, but a lot of love to offer. This is Shih Tzu, number five. Nikki, champion Beswick's in the nick of time, owned by Roy and Linda Ward from Sarasota, Florida, handled by Luke Eric. There's the owner on your screen. Number one Shih Tzu in 1996, again, is one of the breeds that Gilbert Kahn, our judge, is Thank you. well known for. Boy, he's not dressed in the nine, he's dressed in the tens. The Silky is a toy with the heart of a terrier. The breed originated in Australia and is said to be a cross between the Australian Terrier and another toy, the Yorkshire Terrier. The breed was first shown in Australia in 1907, but not in the United States until the early 50s. It is a well-coated dog about, with please. a coat five to six inches long. This is Silky Terrier number 10. Here's Barbara Heckerman, the handler. He's, she's won uh, the breed here a lot of times with her Silkies over the years. She's from Swanton, Ohio. The owners are John Scheid and Don Spear. Can't help it, David, but looks like my sassy. I bet you my Audrey's over there saying the same thing. Oh, I love them. Those dogs steal your heart, don't oh, they, Joe? Oh, easily, easily. Thank you. Well, you know, the studies have shown that dogs relieve your stress and lower your blood pressure. The Yorkshire Terrier, or Yorkie, as he's universally known, is one of the most popular of all toys. Oh. Its ancestry is not well known, although it does seem that the Sky Terrier must have figured in perhaps with an older version of the Manchester Terrier and surely a few other breeds. Most of them may now be extinct. The first Yorkshire Terrier shown appeared in Leeds in 1861. When the Yorkie, Yorkie was first imported into this country, probably in the late 1870s, it weighed between 12 and 15 pounds, much larger than today's fancy dictates. This is Yorkshire Terrier number nine. We were watching get groomed, I tell you, and they wrapped it up, and they wanted his hair to be long and Thank beautiful. You. A lot of work, Joe. Uh, this dog was bred in France. We saw a dog bred in Japan, showing the international impact of the Westminster Kennel Club. Oh, I'd buy it right now. 
Oh, they're great. We're going to be back with more in just a minute. That's gonna be a while. <laughs> Grab a Snickers. Oh, I'm crapping. People frown about all sorts of things. Sometimes it's about money. But one thing that won't cost you a lot is the Lumina from Chevrolet. For starters, Lumina is the most affordable six-passenger car in its class. It costs $2,000 less than a Taurus GL. And for a short time, Lumina also comes with 4.8% GMAC financing. For you, that's a lot less to worry about. So see your Chevy dealer for Illumina and give your face a rest. The car's more Americans trust. Pedigree provides all five building blocks of good nutrition. Protein for strong muscles, carbohydrates for energy, essential oils for a great coat, minerals for strong teeth and bones, vitamins for sharp eyes. Pedigree, developed with vets, recommended by top breeders. Big Daddy's Damsel in Distress is more like Alice in Blunderland. That's not funny. On an all-new Claude's Crib. It's Forbidden TV, Sunday night. Uh, the selections are being made, David. I, I would have a tough... I could not be objective in this, so they'd have to disqualify me. Uh, you've got to be objective. You know, as W.C. Fields once said, just because you love the dimple, you can't... You don't have to marry the girl. <laughs> You have to be objective, look at each dog individually. It's a tough job, I'm telling you. Come on now, you gotta get the Yorkie. <laughs> no rooting in the press box, Joe. Oh, gotta root. Didn't they ever tell you that? Yeah, they told me that a lot and I still rooted. <laughs> Mr. Khan has made uh, his cuts. He's bringing out one more, there's the IG. We have the Brussels Griff on. The Cavalier King Charles. Oh, disappointment for Joe. Tough again to see these little dogs behind some of the handlers from right, our vantage one point. One at a time. Okay. Uh, go right around the end and back. Okay. Right. You don't want these yeah. toy dogs to move too far, Joe. You'll lose them at the other end of the ring. I see a tow truck out there helping them. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Brussels. All right. Next up is the Cavalier, Cindy Lazari. It's a great following for this breed. They had 33 entries today, which is one of the higher entries in the show for their very first show. Mm. Enthusiastic group is great. That's part of how they get recognition. There's the right. English Toy Spaniel, the Blenheim. Prince Charles. The Japanese chin. All right. And here goes the min pin. There's the Pomeranian. <laughs> Billy. Handled by Blake Jones. Here's the toy poodle with Kaz Hosaka from Greenwood, Delaware. Moved to here from Japan, learned to speak English, and learned about dogs from Annie Clark. Here's the Shih Tzu, Nikki. Handled by Luke Eric from Toledo, Ohio. Owned by Roy and Linda Ward. And here's the Italian Greyhound with Mary Dukes, one of the top professional handlers in the country. His dog's name is Style, and that's also his game. Mr. Kahn taking another look up and down the line. Hard look. Well, he's probably got his placements pretty well in mind now. He's just looking for a last few things. And Goic pulls out the chin first. There's the Shih Tzu, the Toy Poodle, and the Cavalier. Wow, well, that'd be a nice placement for a dog in its very please. first show. Very first Westminster. Here they go, taking them around. It's a chin up front with Scott Summers. Rocky is going to get the win, Joe. 
Champion Briar Hill Rock and Roll. One, Scott two, Summers yep, handling three, from Houston, Texas. Four. For owners Diane Meyer and Geraldine Craddock. The Shih Tzu was second, the Toy Poodle was third, and the Cavalier King Charles in his very first Westminster gets fourth in the group. Happy owners, huh? Happy owners of the Cav, the Cavaliers. Scott Summers accepting congratulations from the other handlers. Got to be a proud moment. There's the winner, the toy group, Briar Hill Rock and Roll. It's a beauty. They're all beauties. Okay, that's the winner of the toy group, and we'll be back with more right after this. The winner of the toy group, there's the official name, Champion Briar Hill Rock and Roll, a Japanese chin, Rocky. There's the second place, the Shih Tzu. Third place was the Toy Poodle. And for the first time, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And Alex, who do we have? Well, I'm here with Scott Summers. Scott, tell me, first of all, these dogs, as small as they are, they still have such a presence in the ring, don't they? Uh, yes, they certainly do. <laughs> what is it about this dog that it, does it, it must know that it is in front of all of these people? Um, he does. He just, you know, likes the crowd and the noise and... You know, they just like, they really get into that. Now tell me, when you first walked into the ring, first impression, did you feel that you were on, that the dog was really on? Um, when we went around the ring the first time, I thought he was really just liking it. <laughs> Nervous? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll see you tomorrow night, then I'll give you time to regroup, get yourself together, and groom this gorgeous okay. dog. Rocky, congratulations. Back Thank to you. you, gentlemen. Okay, Alex. Well, Rocky seemed to be all right. Scott looked like he was a little bit nervous, but he was happy. Well, we have finished three of our groups, and we'll be back with a non-sporting group right after these messages. This is what we're leading up to tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, 7 central time. So be sure to join us tomorrow night for the final night of the 121st Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. And you know what we're leading up to, best in show. That's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, 7 central, right here on USA. The non-sporting group. Final group of the night, Joe. 17 breeds and varieties in it. Marion Hodison from Tucson, Arizona is our judge. There's Marion. Born in England. Family moved to Southern California where she imported some collies. Got involved with a breeding program. Her mother was involved with it too. Marion trained dogs for the blind and also helped train some movie dogs. From that, went to judging obedience and tracking and now is licensed for the sporting, working, non-sporting, and herding groups. A little bit of everything in this group, Joe. Originally, the AKC had only registered dogs as sporting or non-sporting. You know, watching the handlers dress today, uh, they were the dominant color was red as we look at the uh, breeds and varieties, the uh, traits. Would red be the dominant color for a handler, or is that just my imagination? You can tell me the truth. I don't think so. I, I don't. I think they they have to wear a color that complements their dog's color. Tonight, they all seem to be in somber dress. Down the back, sir. And the Alaska Malamute, along with other heavy-coated dogs of this general design. The American Eskimo dog is a good watchdog, a fine, loyal companion, and responds extremely well to training. They've been used traditionally in circus acts. This is American Eskimo dog number 14. Champion Sierra's Orion. Ryan is the only American Eskimo in breed history to win an all-breed best in show. Scott Summers, normally the handler for this dog. Scott's still tied up, I guess. <laughs> One of his assistants. Look at that dog. He's excited. The Bichon Forze originated in the Mediterranean area a long time ago. The breed had early success in Spain, and it is believed that Spanish sailors introduced breeding stock to the Canary Islands. 
In the 1300s, Italian sailors rediscovered the little dog and are credited with returning the breed to the continent, where, for reasons not known, they had in all probability become extinct. The breed became the favorite of Italian nobility, and Spain again took the dog. This is Beast Jean Frise, number seven. Nadine Mitchell, one of the owners of this dog, along with Marika Tamaki and Paul Flores, who's the handler here. R rumor. My daughter has a Bichon, but it doesn't look like that at all. I tell you, they take a lot of attention, a lot of grooming. Cook, very Cookie popular Rose. dog, good family dog. Cookies the Rose. Boston Terrier did originate in the Boston area in the 1870s as one of the few breeds that really did start here on this side of the Atlantic or Pacific. English and French Bulldogs plus undeniably some Terrier blood were used to produce what was destined to be one of America's all-time favorite companion breeds. Color, markings, and expression are given special consideration in judging Boston's, but the head counts for more than anything else. The overall effect is expected to be one of alertness and style. This is Boston Terrier, number 14. This is Joey, champion Winston's go get em, Joey Coser. Her husband made, uh, hand, names all the dogs. This is Spinner. Her husband, Dr. Alan Spinner, names all the dogs after hockey players. <laughs> A breed often mislabeled, this is simply the Bulldog, not the English Bulldog. It's got its name from the ancient and brutal gambling spectacle of bull baiting. Seven centuries ago, ancestors of our beloved graceful Bulldog grabbed tepid bulls by the nose pads and hung on while the bull tried to shake the heavy dog loose. The Bulldog's traits of courage and tenacity have made him a symbol of determination. Despite his tough guy good looks, he's fun-loving and extremely affectionate. This is Bulldog number five. Every time I see a Bulldog, that picture right there reminds me of the late William Conrad. Remember? <laughs> Television, he had that dog. Wasn't that great? This dog's name is Robert. There you are. Champion Cherokee Dakota Robert, owned by Cody Sickle. Best of breed last year, too. Great family dog. Loving, happy dog. The Chinese Shah Prey probably dates back to the Han Dynasty, about 200 BC. The name is literally translated as sand skin, or in modern vernacular, sandpaper like coat. This robust 18 to 20 inch tall dog was first seen in this country in 1966, when a few examples were imported from Hong Kong. The breed has received an enormous amount of publicity, and his introduction to America has been rather like the initial release of Gone with the Wind. For it all, the sharp pay as a dog whose eventual standing in this country will result from his appeal as a companion dog and not press agency. This is Chinese sharp pay number 15. There's George, owned by Kenny Gray and Beth Gray Harper. This is Beth, the handler. To the end, please. Hey, can I tell you something apropos of nothing? This afternoon, watching the dog show, and only in the Madison Square Garden can it happen. They were selling champagne and hot dogs. The Chow Chow date back at least two millennia. Although most Chow Chows were discovered in southern China when Europeans arrived, it seems certain that the breed originated in north, northern provinces. All kinds of things may have figured in his background, including Samoyeds, the Master of Tibet, and the Norwegian Elkhorn. We will never know. The first Chow Chows reported in England arrived there about 1880. Ten years after that, they were on American soil. Contrary to a quaintly absurd legend, the Chow Chow is no more closer related to bears than any other dogs. This is Chow Chow number 10. Be some champagne poured tonight, Joe, for these winners. You don't believe me, do you? I, oh, I believe everything you tell me, Joe. No, I've been walking around for three days listening to your stories. You tell me a story. I, if you tell me it's raining outside, Joe, I don't go look out there. I just go get my umbrella. All right. That's what I like to hear. Here's Fred, champion Al Head's Just In Your Dreams, owned by Francis Louise Martin and Michael and Linda Brantley. Yeah, this is Mike Brantley from Lubbock, Texas, the professional handler. 
The Dalmatian gets its name from the province of Dalmatia on the Adriatic coast. He probably started out as a hunting dog and was, in fact, used for centuries as a bird dog and retriever. He arrived in England when carriage riding was the vogue and looked so good running along with the carriage that he became the official coaching dog. His strength, vitality, and swiftness made him a natural guardian and companion around the stables and on the road. In this country, he transferred his skills to fire engines and remains famous as the firehouse dog. This is Dalmatian number 10. Well, now here's a breed that's been in the news all year. Oh, yeah. That's not Cruella de Vil, that's Mrs. Alan Robeson, the owner of the, of the Dalmatian. Mrs. Robeson's had great accomplishments in the sport of dogs, including going best in show here with a pointer a number of years ago. One of the truly class people in our sport. To the end, sir. Dennis McCoy, the handler, went best in show here with a standard poodle in 1991. This dog doesn't need quite as much grooming. Just needs a fire truck, that's all. <laughs> A recent addition to the AKC roster is the Finnish Spitz. The mouth, this medium-sized, somewhat fox-like dog is the national dog of Finland, where his prowess as a hunter with strong pointing talents is still fostered. In this country, he seems destined to be treasured most as a companion. His pointed muzzle, bushy tail, and prick ears, and his dense golden red coat give him that foxy look and clearly establish his Down affinity the back, with the sled dogs, the Pomeranian of old, the Kazun, and the Norwegian elk hound. They're all dogs of the northern countries. This is Finnish Spitz number six. This is Mickey, owned by Tom Walker and Kim Raleigh. Kim from Gallup, New Mexico, is the handler here. She's a fourth-generation dog-showing person. Three of the generations are showing here this year, her mm. daughter and her mother. Oh, the first bark. <laughs> that was the first bark. <laughs> For those of you keeping score at home. <laughs> There can be no serious doubt that the French Bulldog is descended from English Bulldogs. There was some suggestion that a breed of roughly this design existed in Spain prior to 1600, and some French fanciers have tried to deny any connection with the English dog, telling a Frenchman that his breed is a spin-off from the English breed is like touting California wine in Paris. The features that distinguish this breed are its level skull and bat-like ears. This is a delightful family companion animal of British ancestry. The gene pool for this breed in the United States, where they have been very carefully bred. This is French Bulldog number 22. This is Rebel owned by Carol Taylor and Mr. and Mrs. Karada from Japan. The Karadas are here in the United States for the first time to see, her, see their dog. Handled by Norma Gibson Smith, one of the top professional handlers in the country. And he was wide-eyed while he was walking around. He was going to look around and see everybody here. Okay, we still got more to come, and we'll be right back after this. Chicago. That's we, one of the hot tickets. We went Friday night, Joe. It was a big benefit for the Dog Museum. Yeah, down and back here. Followed by point, dinner please. at Tavern on the Green. Ooh, you were in high rent district. I play one of those guys on TV. <laughs> I'm not really. The K's who had originated in the Arctic, that much seems certain. Clearly the same strain that produced this breed was responsible for the Chow Chow, the Norwegian Elkhorn, and the Semiad. This is K's who the number 15. The smiling Dutchman, you look at that expression, you can see those spectacles, that delicate line that runs from the corner of the eye to the lower corner of the ear. This is Cammy, champion Candre Camellia, owned by Janice Wanamaker. The Lhasa Apso is an ancient breed, and almost certainly was named for Lhasa, the sacred city of Tibet. The lion dog of Lhasa was a watchdog in Tibet. He stayed inside where it was warm and barked to alert the Tibetan masters on duty outside. Traditionally, the Dalai Lamas gave palace-bred dogs as gifts in return for special favors. They used them diplomatically, much the way modern Chinese use pandas. A wide variety of colors are permitted. With its coat in appropriate shape, this is a dog of enormous style with a very hard head. This is Las Apso <laughs> number 28. With a very hard head. <laughs> they look like they're hiding something with all that fur covering them down there. This is one of three, three breeds in this group from Tibet, and you can see the similarity. This dog certainly has the most hair. Daryl Martin handling here for Michael Santor and Alan Loso. Well, 
Daryl is also the breeder on this dog. Daryl grew up in dogs. Now tell me you don't think the window's open. Look. The Poodle is a very old hunting dog of unknown origin. Germany and France both had their Poodles, but it was the French that made it their national dog. The clip we see today is derived from practical considerations. The coverings on the joints protected these areas when the dog was on the ground, and the puff at the end of the tail is said to be a French jab at the British Lion. Poodles, remember, come in three sizes, one standard except for size. In this group, there is the standard, over 15 inches tall, and the miniature under 15 inches, but over 10. This is miniature poodle number 40. Joe Vernetti, one of the top breeders of poodles in the country, co-owns this dog with Janet Lange from St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. Alex. It's a dog named Alex. Another one. And this is standard poodle number 26. See the mouth in front, please. Once again, we talk Thank about you. not being fooled by this stylized clip. These dogs were designed for a purpose, and they're still able to perform. They were a gentleman's hunting dog. And in fact, the word poodle comes from the German world word pudel. Yeah, but I remember Roger saying that that tail was a jab at the British Lions. So a little, little <laughs> trash talk please going on one. there. A little bit. This is Lutan. It was Rita Rudner who once asked uh, if she wondered aloud if other dogs thought that poodles were members of a weird religious cult. <laughs> These are great dogs. They have great personalities, great temperaments. Even a, a team of standard poodles once performed in the Iditarod. Doing what? Pulling a sled. To the end, please. It'll be a small sled. Champion Dow and highfalutin. These are great athletic dogs, Joe. Handled by Allison Alexander. The Skipper Key is Belgium's little skipper or little captain. He gained his fame as a watchdog on canal barges. Some people suggest that the Belgian sheepdog was in his background. It was not until 1885 when Queen Marie Henrietta acquired a Skipper Key that the popularity of this breed began to climb. The Skipper has since won broad acceptance as a fine little companion with an exceptionally long lifespan. 20 years is not at all unusual. This is Skipperkey, number six. This is our buddy Chandler Hahn, yeah. the handler, 13-year-old from Winter Haven, Florida. He's already a veteran in here. He's a, he placed in the group last year with this skip. There's his proud parents. His parents take him to gymnastics during the week and dog shows on the weekends. I saw this American fanciers has long been a popular companion and small hunting dog in Japan. It is a smart, foxy little dog that trains well and is loyal almost to a fault. It is bound to become much more popular as his fame spreads, just as was the case in Japan long ago. The Shiba Inu makes a fine watchdog. This is Shiba Inu, number 21. Now, Joe, I don't want you saying anything bad about the Shiba no. Inu named Tommy here because his handler is a guy named Edward J. Finnegan Jr. from Greenwood Lake, New York, who is a former heavyweight fighter, a former sparring partner of Floyd Patterson. Looks like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Maybe I should have told you you shouldn't insult him either. <laughs> That's not an insult. The end, sir. I'm getting out of the booth, Joe. No, no, look at him. As his name implies, the Tibetan Spaniel does apparently come from Tibet, but it stops there. There is no Spaniel in this dog. It is an ancient breed and certainly predates the Christian era. Pictures of this breed appear on bronzes dating back at least to 1100 BC. This is a long-lived, hardy, and faithful pet. The first Tibetan Spaniel wealth in this country appeared on Easter Sunday in 1968. This is Tibetan Spaniel number six. There's Dandy, champion Evan Stern Avalon Dandy Lion. Owned by Dr. Lee Nelson. Handled by David Harper, the second member of the Harper family to be handling a dog. You've seen this evening. Around, please. The Tibetan Spaniel is not a Spaniel, and the Tibetan Terrier is not a Terrier, so much for that. But this little dog has been raised in Tibetan monasteries for over 2,000 years. They served as watchdogs and were considered holy or at least awfully lucky charms. 
No dog of this breed could be sold, but only presented as a mark of enormous esteem. This breed is believed to be ancestral to many other breeds, including possibly the Hungarian Pulley. This is Tibetan Terrier number 16. Joe Timko and Randall Neese on this dog, Max. This is Joe Timko from Los Angeles, handling. This dog's got out of Tibet when a Tibetan woman gave an English physician the dog as a oh, gift after being treated by the physician. Just all, well, they're all champions. Why wouldn't they look great? I mean, it's like going to the Hall of Fame and you look at all those guys. They're all champs. That's right. That's what makes it tough to judge. You're coming down to little things, not the least of which is charisma. Whoa. And one thing about judging, Joe, you need to remember, it's not an exact measurement. It's the opinion of the judge about how the dog of that breed comes, there. compares with its standard. Sharpen, We're not please. judging the Dalmatian against the Bulldog. We're judging the Dalmatian against the perfect Dalmatian. The Bulldog against the perfect Bulldog. The Sharpe against the perfect Sharpe, and so on. And the Miniature Poodle, please. Miniature Poodle. Marion making her cuts. Marion's husband, Sam, is a veterinarian. Been married for 50 Sir? years and involved with dogs every step of the way. Moving the Dalmatian up front. I would have told you earlier, he's my favorite. There's Mrs. Robeson, the owner. And there's the Bulldog up in second. All right, take him around, please. Cody Sickle. Is she already picked him? Or? That's it. I'm assuming that's her order of finish. The Miniature Poodle in third. The Bichon in fourth. Yes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Take them around, please. She's going to take a look at the last two of her cut. <laughs> the Sharpe and the Chow. The Sharpe and the Chow each are the only two dogs who have to have black tongues. Have to have what? Black two. tongues. <laughs> and there's replacements. As they stood, the Dalmatian is first. See everybody congratulating him. The Bulldog is second. Started at 10:30. Dalmatian first. Very popular in the media. This would be a good year for a Dalmatian to win. There's Mrs. Ropes and the owner. And the non-sporting group, the Dalmatian is the winner. You saw it. And there you take a good look. We'll be back now in just a minute. There's the winner of the non-sporting group. Champion Spotlight Spectacular Dalmatian, and boy, Dalmatian has certainly been in our, well, at the movies and everything else. Here's the rest of the rundown. Second was the Bulldog, third, the Miniature Poodle, and then fourth, the Bichon Frise. And now Alex is there with the winner. Thank you, Joe. Dennis, tell me, first of all, I know you're a veteran and you've been in this ring a million times before. Give me some perspective of what this means for you to win group like this. Oh, it's always a thrill. It's a fantastic win and there is no win better. How hard are you working out there? Real hard, the whole time. Keeping her calm, keeping me calm, and keeping her looking her best. She was slipping a little bit tonight on the mat, so I had a little trouble with her feet. Now, what does it mean to to make her calm down? Is, is she naturally very hyper? And she's not hyper, but she gets excited. And if you get her too excited, she'll look up at you and carry on instead of taking care of business. First impression when you walked in the ring, did you feel that she was on tonight? Yeah. Yeah. She came in the ring, and I knew that we were in good shape and that we were going to get a good show on, so the rest was up to the judge. Do you spend any time looking at the competition? I know, you know she does one side at a time constantly to see which other dogs I think are going to be the ones to beat in the ring. Now tell me, what are you going to do between now and when you go into the ring tomorrow? Do you have other dogs to show? Nope, this will do it until tomorrow night. How nervous do you get? What do you go through tomorrow? Real nervous. <laughs> Real nervous. It's, it's, even though I've been here before, I'm always just as nervous. Well, we wish you luck tomorrow night. We'll give you a chance now to go home and relax a little. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gentlemen, back to you. 
Okay, Alex, very good. Well, he was pretty honest about that. He was nervous. He showed it. He talked about it, and that's what it'll do. And we'll be back with more thoughts right after this. At the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show on USA. USA Sports presentation of the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show he is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, and by Pedigree Food for Dogs, developed with the vets at the Waltham Center. Pedigree, recommended by top breeders. Well, David, we had a lot of action, and uh, let me ask you, were you surprised at some of the results? I was a little bit surprised, yes, but again, no surprise would have been more of a surprise. Well, what surprised you? I think the, uh, the fact that the Wire Fox Terrier won the Terrier Group. A great dog, when you look at it out there, showed well. you got to judge on the day, and that dog put on a great show for everybody. Um, I think there weren't too many other surprises, though, in the, in, uh, the working group, the toy group, or the non-sporting with the standard Schnauzer, number one dog, all breeds, and, and the defending champion in the non-sporting group, the Dalmatian. Think the movie held the, helped the Dalmatian? Uh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> His dog won the group last year, too. Well, we're all leading up to tomorrow, so be sure to join us tomorrow night for the final night of the 121st Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show because we'll have the best in show. We'll have more than that, but I'll tell you that tomorrow night, best in show. Wings is coming up next right here on USA. So there you see some of the winners here. The working group of Standard Schnauzer, the ter Terrier group was a Wire Fox Terrier, Toy group Japanese Chin, and the non-sporting group Dalmatian. Tomorrow night we'll have more, and we will be leading up to Best in Show. So far, David Fry and Alex Wilson, this is Joe Garagiola saying we hope you enjoyed it. We did. Good night, everybody.